Mr. Ken Tan from Catalano Shipping Singapore to present on updates marina marine regulations for Singapore. Ken, please join me on stage. Hello, good morning everyone. I hope you guys are staying fresh still after the tea break and then now we are going for lunch probably in a half an hour's time. I'll keep it very brief. I think we all about, know about Singapore pretty well. So good, a very good morning to all partners around the world. Thank you for taking time off to attend this uh, Singapore Yachting Festival 2023. I'm Ken, taking helm of the Catalano Shipping Singapore. Next. Okay, some brief history about myself. I began my marine time career as a marine engineer. So in the earlier photos, you can take a look. I'm from a cadet ship, and then I went on to being an offshore engineer. So that was the first time when actually I un understand what's being away from home. Being away from home gives me two values for being out at sea for six to eight months. That creates the word or the value independence. And then being independent, out at sea, nobody's going to solve your problem. Everyone has to rely on one another. Teamwork is important as well. So during my early stages of my career, these were the values that I created or I kind of like joined on board all the way to a second engineer. Everyone works with one another, teamwork, collaboration, and everyone just want the success of the sea. And, and then the technical skills, then at that point of time, make me um, understand how the technical solutions or technical department work on board. So one interesting fact about that time when I was sailing, uh, or pre-before sailing, I was in SMA, so in, I was as well as uh, in SMA Sailing Club. So I, obtained, I was asked to obtain this uh, PPCDL, which was pretty new at a point of time. And then I did not know what is the purpose of using the PPCDL at a point of time, but my school said, just take it, Ken. You never know when you're going to use it. The next moment, we were all mobilized with PPCDL to support the new marina opening. Guess what? Who is which marina? 115 Marina. So at the point of time, 115 Marina has this uh, mini joy rights, you know what I mean, for their guests, for their members and stuff like that. So in SP, we were tasked on this hidden agenda from our school telling us, go and take PPCDL. We will sponsor you. And then we realized that, oh, that was actually a trap, asking us to actually support the whole event. But eventually, that gives, us, get, gives me a very good overview of yachting at that point of time. But of course, um, I continued my sailing career as a marine engineer. And then I went on to offshore. And soon enough, um, during COVID, I took the leave of faith, doing an MRO on my own, setting up, uh, I think, some of the clients that you might see, like Double Haven, they use some of my services. At that point of time, we manage this for them in docking. So today, it, it comes like a full circle to me as a full turnkey event. Like we actually provide agency work and we provide uh, value-added solutions for this super yacht. All right, next page. So something about Singapore, I don't need to go so briefly, so deeply about Singapore. We are all situated here, 1 degree 15, that shows the longitude and stuff like that. So we all know why we are here at 115. So Singapore, like I think yesterday, Colin, was mentioning to testing my math, asking me how many square meters is Singapore, what's the, what's the hectare that we are looking out for. Basically, we are seven, three, four square kilometers. We are pretty small. At the same time, uh, from east to west, we are 49 kilometers, and north to south, we are 28 kilometers. So, in, that, that's. And Singapore is being a strategic location for all the crossroads. We all understand the different marinas in Singapore. There are five marinas. There's a number of shipyards available for us as well. So, um, next page. So, I always, most of the captains always ask me, what's the purpose of entering Singapore? Is there a cruising ground for them, for the owners to come? Unfortunately, Singapore is not as exciting as Thailand or Malaysia. We do have, uh, I would say that Singapore is more of a staging ground, a technical stopover. So, there are a number of shipyards that supports the work of uh, a, re a refit. 
I think you can see from the photos itself, uh, some photos are taken in Pax Ocean, some photos are taken in ST Marine. Uh, next, please. So next stop, the technical stopover is mainly one is the shipyard, the next is the makers. Makers are probably uh, such as Caterpillar, Collier, Volvo Penta, they are all reputable associated brands that we all know in terms of the boating industry. Everybody comes to Singapore asking where's the spare parts, where are the parts for this, what's the lead time? Everyone is asking about the lead time these days. Um, so we have the makers here, the service engineers are here able to mobilize this quite quickly for these people. Next please. So spares, I think I, I, think, uh, I want to touch base with Captain Nigel. I make an association with him. Ask, he was crying out, I say, guys, where can we get spares from? And then where can we get this from? Of course, we all know in terms of COVID-19 disruptions, um, we are all facing with this supply chain problem. Lead time can go up to six months. I think the last inquiry I got for a new generator from Collier is I think 12 to 15 months itself. So if there's anything wrong with the generator, how can we replace this? The only way is to refit, buy new spares, reboot it, reboot it in. Fortunately, or unfortunately, we are all facing this together. We are all trying to stronghold the better supply chain. So in all, um, most of the suppliers that we are working abroad, locally, are all supplying and helping one another to support the, the spare part problems that we have. Next, please. So I think a um, quick update on the arrival and departure. So basically, these are the quick formalities, details that you might need to submit. I do not do, need to go in detail. I think it's pretty much straightforward. Next, please. So during pre-COVID or during uh, post-COVID, I think uh, CIQ has um, immigration actually do over with the Southern Islands clearance. So now we can actually do, um, in terms of 115 and Raffles Marina, we can actually do the CIQ directly in the marina. So that gives a lot of leverage for these super yachts or different type of visiting yachts. They can just come straight to the marina, bam, get the ICA on board. Seamlessly transfer, captain can go off board, everybody is happy, and then they can rest for the day. All right, next please. So the next is actually this uh, ICA e landing pass, they call it LP itself. So I think uh, everyone who come abroad from overseas, we have to declare this LP. Likewise, for this crew and staff, we have to declare them. So I think um, this is the latest norm that will tell you that how many days duration you can stay in Singapore. And then as an agent, we can actually do an extension accordingly based on what's the duration that the yacht is going to stay in Singapore. Next, please. So some previous event, I think beginning of this year, Singapore, we hosted this sail GP helmed by weight as well. So this was a very successful um, sail GP for all of us. Next. So upcoming events, unfortunately, we don't have much interesting events in Singapore. We're looking at the golf event coming on tomorrow onwards in Sentosa. So I was telling most of my guests that's flying across the world to come and visit this Yacht Festival. They're telling me, oh, Sing Sentosa is going to be very packed. I told them, please come a bit earlier. Don't be stuck in the jam and stuff like that. And of course, uh, the F1 in September. So I think this is the 15th edition that we are hosting uh, for F1 in Singapore. So these are some of the interesting events that we might want to see. All right, next. So that concludes my uh, quick keynote for Singapore.